I didn't I realize once you said your name, I said, oh, that's who it is. That's who Mr. Fullerton is. Hey, you know, we try to differentiate ourselves, this meeting, from other meetings. We, not, we try to create value because value is really important. And it's, you know, what we do here is good. You know, we're here for 90 minutes. We get to meet people. We get to connect. We get to hear things we may not have heard, something to bring us closer to someone else. But really the value comes of what you do after the meeting, who you're going to reach out to, the opportunity that presents itself. And there are two things I'm going to talk today about. One is opportunity and one is money. So they both go hand in hand. When you have the opportunity, it's going to guide you to money because you're looking for opportunity. The more money you have, guess what? The more opportunity you can create you can make. They do go hand in hand. But I want to, before I start talking about that, I have a question for everyone. What is the secret to longevity in a marriage? Yes, dear. Can someone give me that? Can someone give me that? Communication, okay. Anything else? Anything else? Bob. Bob you know, Bob, Bob has an anniversary coming up this May. 52 years. Wow. 52 years. What? He can run faster than my car. He can <laughs> run faster than my car. No, no, I've never heard that one. That's awesome. You know, I deal, I deal with a lot of, and, and this is just an aside, I deal with a lot of Medicare beneficiaries, and I love talking to the older folks. Why? Because I get so much education and information from them that I, that I never knew. You know, I'm younger than they are. But it's great, and I met with someone this Monday, 81-year-old man, 79-year-old uh, woman, and they were married for 61 years. 61 years, and I, whenever I ask someone how long you've been married, and they tell me, I said, oh, I bet you it was all wedded bliss. And of course, there's a big laugh that happens, and it's usually the woman looking at the man. <laughs> well... When it came time to get payment to start the process, and I need I finished everything, now I needed a check for, to, to put on there for an EFT. He went this way, she went this way. They came back with their own checkbooks. And I said, oh, that's the secret to a happy marriage. You have your own money. So I just, I just thought I would share that with you. Um, opportunity and money. You know, we have opportunity in front of us 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and we don't even think about it. We don't even, because we, we are looking for our next opportunity. Look at this room. There is a ton of opportunity in this room. And I'm willing to bet that people are going to leave here <clears throat> letting go of that opportunity because I've got to get somewhere else. I've got another meeting to go to. Ah, this meeting was okay. I've got to go somewhere else. Think about the opportunities you have on a daily basis. Everyone you meet, everywhere you go, every conversation you have is an opportunity. I'll give you an example of myself. Eight years ago when I moved here, I was in Starbucks and I was in line. And there was a woman in front of me and she's talking to the, guy, the barista, she's talking to the guy who's taking her money, and I just wanted to get the hell out of the way because I want my coffee. And she's just talking and talking and talking. <laughs> now she turns around to me, and it was Valentine's Day. And how do I know it was Valentine's Day? Because she turns around, and she goes, Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> do you have a Valentine today? <laughs> and I stood here like, All right, what am I going to do with this? What am I going to do with this? I decided to engage. I could have gave her some New York and, you know, <laughs> give me my coffee. I decided to engage. I engaged with her. And, you know, just by engaging with her, we ended up, I ended up getting my coffee. We ended up walking outside. We had a 20-minute conversation. I exchanged business cards. To this day, she still refers me business. It's an opportunity that occurred. Would I ever have that opportunity if I just walked away? Think about your daily interactions that you have. There are tons of opportunity out there. And we need to really just think about every person we meet, every interaction we have, as, an, as, as a time for an opportunity. We'll lead 
to, to knowledge, will lead to education, will lead us to money, will lead us to referrals. And you know, so many times with opportunities, we just don't see it. You know, it reminds me, I just heard a story recently. A guy was watching TV, he's lived in this house for 60 years, his parents owned this house. It was on the river, right on the river. And on the news, about 170 miles upstream, there was gonna be some rain. And that rain was coming at 12 to 20 inches in a 24 hour period. And he lived downstream. And the potential risk was there for major flooding. He looked at it, oh, I've lived here 60 years, my parents lived here years before that. I'll be fine, it's in God's hands. The next day he gets a knock at the door, it's a police officer. And they say, you know, we're not, we're not evacuating right now, but we just want you to know there's a lot of rain. It's going to be flooding up the area. It's coming down the river, and you're in a potential flood zone. This can be devastating. And he said, no, I'll be all right. I've lived here 60 years. My parents lived here. I'm going to put it in God's hands. Went to bed that night. The next day, wakes up, looks out. The river, the river now is above the banks, and it's starting to surround his home. I've done this before. I'll be okay. A few hours later, the river is even rising more. It's already two feet in. He's got a two-story home. He's on the second floor. He'll be okay. He sees a rowboat coming around. The rowboat. The guy in. Hey, we're here to rescue you. I'm okay. Leave it in God's hands. I've been here. Six hours later, the water's seven feet up. All of a sudden, it's a helicopter. The helicopter screams down with a bullhorn says, we're here to rescue you. I'm fine. I've lived here. I've seen this flooding before. They go away. Two days later, his body was found a mile downstream. His house was gone. His house was gone. He's up at the pearly gates of heaven now. And he's St. Peter's there. And he gets to talk to St. Peter. He goes, I want to speak to God. I'm mad at God. St. Peter says, why are you mad? Well, I was waiting for a sign. I was waiting for an opportunity, something to save me, to protect me. St. Peter said, what do you want? We put it on the news. We had a guy knock at your door. We had a rowboat. And we even sent a helicopter. And you didn't take the opportunity to get out of there. I think a lot of people do that in their lives. There's opportunity all around us. And we're always looking for the next opportunity. The best opportunity may be right where you are right now. And if you don't explore it, you won't know it. Which leads me to money. Which leads me to money. You know, tax time. Who here was happy to pay taxes? <laughs> right? Why not? Why not? If you got a refund, well, that means you overpaid. If you paid taxes, you didn't pay enough. And if you paid a lot of taxes, well, you probably made a lot of money. There's nothing wrong with money, right? They say money is the root of all evil. Well, I like Earl Nightingale's take on it, that money isn't the root of all evil. We need money. We need money for our, oh, the warmth of a home. We need money for clothes. We need money to drive a car. We need money to educate our children, to afford them a lifestyle. We need money for food. It, is not, it, is, it, is, it isn't the root of all evil. We need money. Money's a good thing. We have to look at money as positive. We have to look at everything that comes into our life as positive. But money, how, do we, how did you do in 2012? How did you do? Think about 2012. Did you reach your goal? Did you even have one? My guess is most of us didn't have a goal. Didn't have a goal of what we wanted to make in 2012. My guess is that we've just go along, because I don't think anyone here gets paid by the hour. I think we have to hunt to eat. I think we're 1099s. I think we may get some bonus income. But we need to get people into our business to be able to earn an income. But how much, how much do you want to make? How much do you need to make in 2013? A quarter of the year is gone. Do 
you know how much you've made? So reach your goal for 2013. Have, do you even have a number? Think about that. I've been reading Think and Grow Rich again, Napoleon Hill. Visualization and auto-suggestion. Very important in your life. Visualizing what you want in your life. How many times have you had a definite a purpose, a focus, and visualized it, and were able to get that success that you wanted? Think about your life, all the years you've been here. I know for me I have, when I've had a purpose, when I've had a focus, and all I thought about was that goal, I've achieved it. And everyone can achieve it. The problem is, it takes courage. It takes courage to start to look at your goals and want to succeed. It's easy to say, I want to make X amount of dollars in your head. But if you don't see it every day, if you don't put it out there, look at it in the morning, look at it in the evening, look at it at lunchtime, have it as your focus, you may never reach it. Les Brown has a great quote about the greatest place to find goals and dreams is the graveyard. And why is that? Because most people keep it all in their minds. They don't put it out in the universe for it to come back to them. So I'm gonna do a little, I'm hoping that this is gonna help you today. I'm gonna hand out some of these cards. And, and this is something that I keep in my wallet. This is something, and I'll show it to you because it is in my wallet. And it's a goal. It's a goal. I've decided I'm going to share what I want to do. That's what I want in my life. I want to make that. I know exactly what the month I have to come up with. I know exactly what it has to be in here. If you can take these and just pass those down that way. Let's take those. Everyone take one and pass them down this way. Can I give you one of these? Okay, so you right. Oh, you got it. Great. All right? You know, break down what you want. Break down what you want. You make 40000 last year. Would you like to bump that up 20%, another eight grand? Is that doable? To make 100000 last year, do you want to bump that up 20000 why not? It's your goal, but if you don't put your goal, if you don't set your goal, if you don't have a number, then what's the <clears> sense? What is the sense? I have it in my wallet right here. So that way when I take my money out, I can see it. I know that's my focus. I know that's what I want to reach. How do you reach that? You know, you can break it up into small increments. Any goal, we've all heard of SMART goals, right? Specific, measurable, attainable, results-based, with a time frame. We all know that. Well, it's a specific goal. I know what I want at the end of the year. Is it attainable? Absolutely. Why not? Is it results-based? Yes, I can see the results as I go along. I've broken it up into small increments. I know to hit $120,000 a year, and if I do work 2,000 hours, which is 50 weeks in a year, I know that, and I can break that down 10-hour days or $50 an hour. Can I do that? Yeah, why not? It's my goal. I can do whatever I want that I set my mind to. So can you. So can you. The problem is now we have the goal. What are the action steps that we have to take to reach that goal? We all know what they are. We do, and on the other side of that card, I want you to write down your task card that you have. What are the five tasks that you need to do to achieve your 2013 income goals? What are they? Are there five? Are there three? Are there two? Five is a nice number. Why? I don't know. It sounds like a nice number. Write them down. Don't number them. After you write down your five tasks, take the most important one. Put a one. Take the second most important. Number two, write down the list until you have five. Okay, now you have five tasks that are strictly going towards achieving your income goal for 2013. Every day you look at that card, every day you start with number one. If it means you have to call 20 people a day 
you start with number one. And you do not go on to your next task until you're done. If for some reason you can't finish number one, because you're waiting for a call, you're waiting for some additional information, then you can go back to number two. But once that call comes in, you go back to number one. And you complete it. And you do this every day. It's hard work. Because, my God, the phone rang here, and I hear the dog barking over here, and I got something to do over here. A lot of things that we do in life, in business, do not create income. Who agrees with me? Absolutely. We have to focus. We have to focus. I recommend taking this, put it on your refrigerator. Stick it on the bathroom mirror, put it in your wallet, put it in your purse, put it in the visor of your car so when the sun comes down you see this paper and you go, what's this? Oh, it's my income goal. Oh, forgot about that. Keep it in the top of your mind. It's so important that what we think about, what we think about in our lives, the goals we want to achieve, that we put them out there and we look at them daily. Because you know, we all can achieve success, we all have the same brain, we all use 5% of it. Oh my God, imagine if we used another 20% of our brain. How much better off we could be. I wish everyone continued success. I'm happy you're here today. Thank you very much for listening to me.